Everybody, this is Birch. Uh, much like the video where I talked about, uh, you know, what do you do about past racist comics? You know, we spend, people spend a lot of time, there's a lot of articles. And, and, and this is the thing that, that gets me at the end of the day. So please, uh, kind of, I'll start with this. Because this informs a lot of my feeling on things. And I know I'm not alone. For a long time, I felt alone. I felt like I was the only one who was like this. And then, you know, I, I talked to other people, met my wife, and and then other people who've listened to these videos have sent me a lot of nice mails, and I realize I'm not alone. Uh, the, the issue is this. Uh, I, there's not enough time in the world to do what you want to do. You know, we, we, we're born, we go to school, we waste all our time with that, we get a job, we die. It's like life's over pretty quickly. You have lots of dreams, lots of hopes, lots of things that I'm sure you probably want to do in your life. And time is precious. Your time is being stolen all the time by work and by commutes and by people in front of you in the self-checkout line that do not know how to use the goddamn machines, even though it's really super simple. Or people in front of you at the airport who do not understand the concept of take the metal out of your pockets, you big idiot. Take your metal out of your pockets, a giant janitor-sized key ring of keys and you know, five months worth of laundry quarters are metal, you big dumbass. Take them out of your pocket before you walk through the metal detector, because otherwise it's going to beep and you're going to have to come back. And then we're all waiting behind you going, why is this person still alive? How do they even know how to breathe? What's going on? Sorry. I, uh, sorry, children. I could just take a deep breath there. There's not enough time is my point. So a lot of things, a lot of this performative outrage uh, feels to me like people wasting time. It's like, just say what you want. And in comics, it's, it's, and again, this is where I come from, maybe a centrist point of view, where I see a lot of people, uh, you know, doing this and just wasting a lot of time. And, and it's like, we're, but we're not getting to any kind of solutions. At the end of the day, like, we would like some good comics. We would like for the creative teams to get paid more. And we'd like for the quality of comics to go up, and we'd like for the volumes of comics getting sold to go up so that maybe the prices could go down or the efficiencies of scale could help improve things. I mean, all, 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 kinds, of, all kinds of things that we'd like to do. Uh, but instead, we're going to talk about, uh, you know, the is Madripoor represented in a culturally sensitive way uh, in the Disney Plus adaptation of a Captain America storyline from the 80s that really isn't done terribly well if the, the bar of done well is recreate the 80s storyline. So, but, but yet articles and articles and articles and tweets and trendings and uh, topics and all this effort is going to go into it. I mean, you take a look at uh, some of the indie creators, and this to me always feels like the huge trap. If you're an indie creator, and I granted, I'm sure a lot of the indie creators are not listening to me. They are, they are thoroughly plugged into the teat of uh, the beach or wherever it happens to be, where that that's how they're going to get into this industry. So nobody's, they're not, you're not listening to me. I mean, crazy me. Why would you listen to me? But when you spend days, weeks, months of your life uh, engaging in stupid nonsense, and when I say stupid nonsense. The topic may be important to you. Maybe this is something that is a, you know, something you really care about. Could be. Sounds great. But it's not something that's going to help your career. It's not something that's going to put food on the table. It's not something that's going to get you that book deal with, you know, Penguin Random House or whatever it happens to be. It's not something that's going to uh, encourage Alana Smith to write you back or somebody at DC to actually you know, pick up the phone and, and care about the submission. You're, none of this stuff matters. Are, are we engaging today on the trending topic of should Disney rename Splash Mountain into Princess of the Frog? And maybe you're really angry because the former attorney general of the United States of America is not prosecuting Trump as much as you'd hope or whatever. It happened. None of that stuff's getting you a job. Now, you're welcome to engage in it and doing it. But when people go so hyperbolic and they hyperventilate about these topics, um, it feels performative. And the crazy part, the part that I've come to understand and believe is that the people doing the performing uh, don't think they're doing the performing. They actually believe that they're espousing some kind of great wisdom or they're 
they're bringing something to the table that nobody has heard before, or, uh, or they're passionately describing their frustration with Kraft macaroni and cheese, because on the back of the Kraft macaroni and cheese, there's a little macaroni and trees cartoon character that looks vaguely Mexican. And so we need to, you know, boycott the company, I, wh whatever it is you're doing. Um, I mean, cool, go nuts. But is your career getting sacrificed in the process? Because everything takes energy. You know, I'm investing energy making this video. Now, granted, I'm also driving, so I'm multitasking. I'm the definition of a multitask. I have to get from point A to point B, and it just so happens that I'm talking about your racist macaroni and cheese while I'm driving, which is absurd when I say that out loud, but that's the world we live in now. Uh, but it, all this stuff takes mental energy. It takes time away from you. And the challenge is, and this is my, my question I pose to comics, and this is really kind of the heart of it is, and I, I'm, I'm not trying to be the, the Karen in the room of like, you guys shouldn't do certain things. I, I'm saying, is any of this helpful? Are any of your goals being met? Like, uh, you know, we, we want to, we, we all want more pay, more recognition, job stability, security, or maybe none of those things, but we've got a creative story in our heart that we really need to get out to the world because it's so goddamn amazing and wonderful that, you know, we, we need to have it out there. Um, is that all, uh, is, are, are, you know, like, are, are we accomplishing those things that financial or creative stability? Are we, are we making any progress with that? Or are we just messing around talking about, I don't know, that, the touchscreens in Star Trek should have uh, had more buttons and knobs on them because it's too hard to use technology. I mean, I like what are what are, what are, what are we doing? What are we doing anymore? Um, I, I think it's hard. And and here's the thing: I think a lot of people reading this stuff, viewing this stuff, view it all as very phony. And I've told people, I you know, I, I've managed different people in my life in different positions and professions. And one of the things I've always said is, hey, um, you know, one of the traps to fall into, one of the things to pay attention to is how you're coming across. Because if, you, um, if you're angry and you're in a meeting or with other people and you can't hide your anger, meaning you don't have a good poker face, you, you're, your anger is seeping through, people know it, and it, uh, it's causing a problem. That's bad. But what's worse than that is if you're not actually angry, if you're actually happy inside, but your personality and your expression and your energy, everything exudes anger. If that is happening, that's the worst of all worlds. Now you're, you're basically being, your, your, your performance is not one you control. And this is, you know, I, I get lots of tweets sent to me. I see different things people are saying, different creators saying, and, and by and large, I think to myself, man, a lot of these people are out of their mind. You know, is it that you're tweeting at like midnight about how many pizzas you ate? Is it that you're uh, talking about that you accidentally drank shampoo? You thought that was a joke in, uh, in, in one of the videos I did with Joe. No, sir. No, that was not a joke. Uh, is this the kind of stuff you're putting out? And, and what is your goal? Is your goal to appear wacky and funny? In which case, it's questionable if you've accomplished that. But uh, what I've come to understand and fear is to a lot of people, they don't understand that they sound insane, that they, you sound the performance you're putting out, the performative outrage that you're putting out has exceeded even what you think you're doing. You may think you're just putting out some kind of you know, pithy, witty kind of rando comment, but you're putting out crazy talk, pure and absolute crazy talk. And that's, that's not healthy. Like you, like, you know, you should feel lucky if you don't lose your job over it, but none of this is good for you. None of it. You, you sound insane. You're not generating support. You're not generating happiness. You're, you're, you're just coming off sounding like a lunatic. And I, I you know, it comes to like, is there no mentor, boss, parental figure, anyone who's like, like going, Hey, um, I noticed yesterday, um, you were tweeting about how you got 
super super high, so high that you uh, you tweeted that you went out of the house or the apartment down onto the street in your underwear, and you thought you were chasing cartoon characters down the street for a couple hours, and um, and then you talked about going back to the apartment and being late to finish the script for the comic book that is due this month. Uh, for us, the number two publisher in the United States. Hey, maybe uh, I'm concerned that number one, uh, I don't have that script. So what's going on with uh, with your job? And number two, uh, it reflects poorly on our brand for one of our you know main writers to talk about getting so stoned that you no longer know where you are or who you're engaging with, and you believe you're seeing animated characters running down your street like this. We have some concerns with putting you on Batman, for example, because, you know, we have a wide range of people who read Batman and uh, they might be worried if uh, the, the writer of Batman is uh, running around in their underwear. Just, just, just saying, you know, and I know that you sent me an email last week about how you'd like to be one day on the main Batman title. Uh, but I can't help but notice that you keep tweeting about getting stoned every other night, and maybe you should just keep that to yourself. Like, do we? Do, is that is that where we are? Where we've got to say that? Because I, I know this is a different video and a different take than what you're hearing. You're, you probably would rather I come on here and talk about how the the woke champions are, uh, you know, effing things up for everyone and I, whatever. Uh, but. I think there's a there's a deeper problem here, and that's like your performances, whether it's performative outrage or performative wackiness or whatever it happens to be, your performative behavior is uh, is 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 a problem. Yeah, I, I mean, I'll be honest. Most of you just stayed around for the uh, getting high, running down the street, chasing after cartoon animals bit, and uh, I wish it was a bit. Uh, but no, uh, no, that was that was tweeted out and uh, and since deleted. But uh, what the hell? There are a few people that I correspond with at this point um, on Twitter, where ninety nine percent of our conversation is just uh, pasting in tweets, going, "What the f is this?" Comics, everybody. Hey, uh, thanks for listening.